Um, and we were talking about it quite a bit after we discovered that Micah had taken her life. It talks about a tracker being put on her car. It talks about her, her tires being slashed. It talks about this device being jabbed into her tires to let the air out. Uh, it talks about a man showing up at a gas station, then following her to a car dealership, and that man's name was redacted all the way through. Last night, we learned the man's name was actually John Paul Miller, the estranged husband, the man who everybody had pointed to as the cause of all of this prior uh, to, to finding out it was a suicide. But now we actually have an email from him when he's admitting to some of this behavior. What have you found out? So we've come into a lot of information that has been sent to the police, and that's the key thing here, because people are wondering, okay, so what are police to do with all of these allegations? Do they even know? And now we know that her family has forwarded all of this information to the police. One of the things that is included in these documents is an apology email from him to Micah on April 15th of this year, which is about 12 days before she died. In it, he writes, I'm sorry for damaging your car, tires, etc. If you ever come back, I will turn in both cars and get you a nice SUV or whatever car you want. Again, my horrible flesh pattern of hurting someone when they hurt me. So there you have it. He's kind of outing himself. And I'll give you something shiny and new if you just come back to me. Boy, if I had a dime, yeah. uh, Rich, for every time I've seen an abusive relationship like that. So JP, actually, Mr. Miller, John Paul Miller, Pastor Miller, has been having conversations with you uh, via, um, you know, texting back and forth. And yeah. if I understand this correctly, he has also admitted directly to you that he's the person who put the tracker on the car. That's right. That's right. So earlier this week, I believe it was Monday, I engaged with him and he started talking back with me, kind of unprovoked. And I also want to read this because this thing stood out to me when I read it at the time. Uh, I didn't really know it. He said, um, I even, this is JP to me, I even hired a PI to put trackers on her car to know if she was going to a gun store because she kept trying to get a gun for these past few, for the past few months. I have never once in my entire life ever hurt her in any way, ever. Um, I was just communicating with him on text, drawing him out, and he kept texting and texting and texting. Um, I've officially asked him for an interview. His, his attorney has, of course, said no, um, but that's where it stands. That's pretty glaring, admitting to that. Okay, the next thing is that he apologized for something else. And this was something we were unsure of. There were allegations that Micah had been threatened, that a topless photo of her would be posted on the internet. And now he is admitting that it was him. He was the one making those threats. Yes, yeah, so this goes back to this apology letter that we've, we have. It's an apology letter from him to Micah, dated April 15th. In it, he's apologizing for a series of things. And one of them, is a photo that he that was produced on the internet it was topless of her we're not going to show that here of course but in in the apology he says i'm sorry for putting a picture of you on the internet it was for less than one hour and immediately taken down i was hurt that you were telling everyone horrible intimate details of my past sin and i just wanted to try and hurt you please forgive me it was evil of me to do that Oh, so yeah, it's only up there for an hour. Like that doesn't have life elsewhere when people download uh, naked photos and they live forever. And I'm sorry, but there's the but. Like that's again, right. just a classic pattern that you often see. Um, so you have also seen text messages between John Paul um, Miller and Micah's family. What were in those text messages? Some of the text messages I've seen were pictures of text chains where her family was communicating and Micah was on there, but Micah, this was at a time where I believe she was in the hospital. And so the, the Micah jumps into the conversation and said something like happy Valentine's day to me. And I, I believe her mother or a relative says, Micah, is, is that you? And it was quickly figured out that this was not Micah. This was, this was JP that he had possession of the phone and he, it, was, it, he, he, it was his interpretation, legal interpretation, that it was marital property. And so this is just one of, one of a number of instances. You know, he took over her Facebook page. Uh, her brother took it back and her sister took it back and said, hey, this account has been taken over. Do not post. 
Uh, it's there's a there's a wow. lot here. There's a lot here actually. Like I mean, marital property, sure, but communicating as someone else is not marital property. You can't just grab a marital property no. telephone and then pretend to be like. Th there's a distortion if I've ever heard one. So Micah herself wrote something before she died, a document of sorts. Did you get your hands on it and what's in it? Yes. So this is a letter that she wrote two days after this apology letter, if I have this correct, uh, and roughly nine days before she passed, before she died. It was a letter to, uh, for the courts in, in part of her divorce court proceedings. Um, and it's, it's a hard thing to read. I'll just be completely honest. She lays out like the entire case of why she's leaving him and what, what has happened to her. I just want to read a snippet of it. I don't even know if we have it, but she, her, her opening sentence is, since the day we became husband and wife, I have been abused in every way I can think of emotionally, sexually, spiritually, financially, and physically. He has harassed me physically and electronically with letters, phone calls, emails, texts, hacking my emails, hacking my personal Facebook and impersonating me, using my stolen phone to send texts and emails out to church members. It goes on and on and on. Installing tracking devices on my vehicle, on my godmother's vehicle. The trackers were found on March 11th, March 14th, March 24th, April 15th. Um, all of these, all of these have been documented and reported to the police. That's the key here, actually, is that That's the police what I have all this information. It. The police have all this. They have, they have the letter. They have the incidents. They have, they have police reports. Did they do anything about it? This case gets stranger and stranger. And yes, the authorities, due to their investigations, have ruled that Micah Miller took her own life, unfortunately. But these latest rounds of, of accusations and actually facts that the police department knew of prior to Micah taking her life, unfortunately, is devastating, it's crazy. So my question that I pose to you is, can a pastor, can a leader, can a minister of a church make the choice to do destructive things to his wife, his fiance, his girlfriend, his family and friends, knowing that they're wrong and knowing that the choices that he's making are the choices that he's made goes against everything that God calls us, to, calls us to do, goes against everything that the Bible teaches us. And my answer to you is yes, because we live in the flesh. And if we don't renew our minds on a daily basis, if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to penetrate our hearts and give us a new awakening, it's easily for our fleshly desires, our tendencies, what we're comfortable with doing that's outside of the will of God. It's easy for us to allow that to take precedent in our lives because that's what we're comfortable with. Now, with John Paul Miller posting nude photos of his wife online, slashing her tires, putting a GPS tracker on her car is senseless. And it goes to show you that if you don't check yourself, if you don't put measures into place, if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to truly penetrate your heart and allow him to reign and rule over those proclivities that you have, the darkness that we all have in our flesh, you will get to a point, man or woman, that you're doing things that are outside the norm. Now, of course, I don't know John's background. I don't know how he grew up. Honestly, I've never heard of Pastor John until all of these things came out with his wife, Micah. But based on the choices that he's made, his narcissistic tendencies, selfishness, his pride, his ego, he has a lot of healing to do. 
he needs to get help for his selfishness and his insecurities and a lot of father wounds that he has not gotten over. A lot of wounds from his childhood that he's yet to heal from. The reason I say this is because those were the things, the tendencies that I had. I did not put GPS stalker on other women's cars. I did not slash tires. I did not post lewd photos. But the, his mannerisms, his, his choices, his insecurities are the, goes back to what we all need to face and heal from as men who are wounded, whose father left them at an early age. So this is devastating. I'm not one bit surprised by all of these things that are coming out based on my previous video and him preaching a sermon and then talking for maybe a minute or two minutes about his wife <laughs> taking her own life. And he didn't seem the least bit affected by this. Of course, again, I don't know him, but any man who has gone through trials and tribulations and that has married, been married before, and you say that this woman is the love of your life, knowing that she had mental health issues, and knowing a night before or two nights before that she took her life, for you to make the decision again, the unwise, unhealthy, selfish decision to preach on stage and to not be there for her family. They didn't have a great relationship and her family is accusing him of doing this, but that's neither here nor there. But not doing everything in your power just to comfort the family and comfort her loved ones, that's suspicious to me. So all of these, these facts, right? These allegations and, and the pure facts that these two talked about based on him flashing her tires, him posting lewd photos, him putting a GPS tracker on her, on her car saying that, it, that he would never hurt her. Verbalizing something, saying one thing, and doing another is wrong. If he were to do these things, if all of this is true, I would have much more respect for him, for him if he didn't say, I would never ever hurt you because actions speak louder than words. This is senseless, the things that he's done. This is devastating. And pastors and pre preachers and ministers and leaders do this all the time if they have not checked themselves and come under the rule of the Holy Spirit. And again, prime example, my mother was married to uh, a pastor of the church. You know, he took advantage of her spiritually, and physically. My brothers and I witnessed this all the time growing up. He was a narcissist. He was a womanizer, all of the above. So I'm not one bit surprised by John Paul Miller being a womanizer. Based on his responses and the, the text and the emails that went back and forth with him and Micah, he's a womanizer. I can see right through his soul, his heart. And I don't say that to judge him, I say that because I was once like him and being a womanizer and playing the field and having a bruised ego. I was hurting inside. So I projected the hurt and the pain and the anger and the frustration out on everyone else, especially those I was in a relationship with. I'm still working on my flaws. I'm still working on my selfishness, but I'm consciously aware that decisions that I, the decisions that I used to make, I can no longer make those. So let me know what you guys think of this. If you have not seen the video, my reaction to him preaching a sermon and announcing to his congregation that his wife, Micah, had taken her life, I need you to do that. That video will be posted in the description and a link is in the video as well. So let me know what you guys think. Again, as I, I did on my previous video, Lord, I just pray for Micah's family. I pray for John. I ask, Lord, that um, 
you would just do a supernatural miracle in healing in their lives and that all of the facts, all of the skeletons will come out of the closet. And most importantly, that he will completely repent of his choices and his sins and turn away from that lifestyle and get the help that he truly needs. So let me know what you guys think of this. Thank you for your support. Please, please, please comment below. God bless. Always strive to remain set apart. Take care.